with Fitness RX for Women, and this is my next question and answer segment with the Fit Life series. I'm actually, doing this video from Finland, my last day here, we fly back to the States tomorrow. So, I chose six questions from online and Facebook this week, and the first one is One of my arms has more definition than the other. I read not to increase weight on the one arm and not the other. Would I increase the reps? Do you have any other recommendations to help increase the definition in the opposite arm? Well, it's not unusual uh, for someone to have more definition or a little bit um, different shape from one side to the other. Usually you're the one who notices that a lot more than other people do when they look at you. But one thing you can do is what's called unilateral training. And you're right, you don't want to do more weight on one arm than the other. Um, the weaker arm and the stronger arm should still use the same amount of weight. Uh, so by incorporating you know, single arm shoulder press or single arm bicep curl instead of using the bar, um, basically anything can be used one arm or leg at a time and that will help create um, a little less of the imbalance. Is mineral water okay during a competition diet? the ones that have no sodium, no calories, no carbs. Well, most water has no carbs and no, <laughs> no calories. Um, as far as the no sodium, I think that keeping electrolytes in your water is really important when you're getting ready for a contest. Um, you know, keeping your sodium and potassium levels <laughs> regulated is, is really important. So I don't think drinking mineral water is harmful, but I don't think that it's all you should drink. The next question I have is, is CrossFit, um, or can I use CrossFit as the only means of training, or do you think it is also important to do muscle-specific training? This is all going to depend on what your goals are. I mean, if you're training for CrossFit, then yes, you probably could just do CrossFit for your training. But if you're training to do a competition, I do not recommend CrossFit being your only form of training. When you get ready for a physique show, you are trying to create your body to look a certain shape and it's important to work the smaller muscle groups and to you know some of your areas some of the areas of your body that are a little overdeveloped may not need to be hit quite as hard or um, areas that are underdeveloped may need to be hit a little harder so and in, by incorporating body part specific training will help with those imbalances as well so as far as incorporating CrossFit into your program I don't see a problem with doing that maybe once a week or so, but it shouldn't be your only form. The next question I have is what does one learn, how does one learn to break down workouts to single body parts? Where can I learn about muscle groups to do together and what exercises to do? If you're just starting out with weight training, I would really recommend doing either total body workouts first or upper body and lower body separate. Um, that way you can get used to lifting with the weights, learn how to use the proper form and technique, and then when you when you get to the point where you're trying to you know, increase the intensity of your workouts, you can break it into single body parts. There's so many ways to do this. Um, I mean online there's a hundred million ways that you can break up a workout program. Um, some people will break it up and do maybe two muscle groups each day, some will do one, some may hit a single muscle group twice a week. Um, some believe by hitting your weaker areas at the beginning of the week when you're stronger is the right way to do it. There's so many ways. Um, there's three days, four days, five days, six days, seven days splits. So my advice would probably be to look at someone's physique that you um, want to kind of emulate and see what kind of training program they're doing and then kind of research from there and just take bits and pieces from what you read online. Um, there's no right or wrong way. As far as what exercises to do for each muscle group, um, if you just search back training, you'll see an entire list of exercises to do for your back. Um, making sure you hit each muscle group from all angles, you know, for back for example, doing a wide grip to hit high lat doing a reverse row to hit low lat, doing a close grip to hit the upper middle. Um, so, you know, making sure that you hit all areas of each muscle group if you're doing single body part training is really important. So, do your research um, or hire a trainer who has experience in that to help you out. 
The next question I have is, what is a fat burner and are they a no-no? Are they natural? Fat burners, um, I suppose, would be known as like a diet pill. Um, what they, what most of them have are B, vitamin, B vitamins, like ginseng, um, caffeine. It's really to increase the, um, increase your metabolism by, you know, giving you a boost of energy to work harder in the gym, to, you know, go longer and push harder to burn more calories, uh, which would in turn help burn more fat. You need to do it in a combination with diet and cardio and exercise I mean. So just by taking a, a diet pill or a fat burner isn't going to give you the maximum benefit as if it would taking um, uh, doing uh, strength training and, and cardio program as well as having a clean diet. So I mean I, I don't think they're a no-no but they should not be um, over consumed. Um, some natural forms would be like a green tea extract something like that is pretty easy or just coffee. Coffee is very natural. Um, you can get that pretty much everywhere, and it also has you know, fat burning effects. So you don't necessarily have to get a diet pill. And the last question I have is: Is bread bad for you? Um, you know there are many different types of breads, and the one thing that you really want to pay attention to when looking at bread is the ingredients. Most bread that you buy off the shelf will have. Um, sugar in it. Um, most of the time written as high fructose corn syrup. It's also got yeast and flour and it's pretty high in carbohydrates. It's um, usually pretty high on the glycemic index meaning it will spike your blood sugar up. However if you get like a whole wheat it's usually lower um, with higher fiber. But if you're going to have bread um, I would recommend more of like a, a sprouted grain like a Ezekiel bread, something um, that's definitely more natural than just like a, I can't even, a Wonder Bread or something like that. Um, but if you're trying to lose weight and you get to a point where you're still incorporating bread but you still have some extra body fat that you want to lose, by eliminating bread, I think that it would push you a little bit further. So it's all in what you feel would be fit into your lifestyle. Uh, I hope that helps you guys out. So there's my question answers for this week. Keep asking your questions on Facebook, and I will see you next week.